we go. So we're going to do a third transformation today. On Monday, we did a translation. We were sliding around the grid by adding and subtracting to the x's and y's. Yesterday, we were flipping things over by following some rules. So really, if you know what x is and you know what y is, right, and you know how to negate things, like take their opposites, this is really easy. You're just plotting dots for the first four sections. Today, we're going to be given a figure, and we're going to turn it, but we're going to have rules that tell you how to change the coordinates, like maybe 2, 5 has to go to 5, negative 2, for it to turn a certain amount. But as long as you have those rules, it's going to be quite straightforward. So what I want you to do is go to that new note sheet. If you didn't grab one, grab one. So this guy right here. The first thing I need to do over on the side is make sure you know the difference in our 100% positive, what's the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise. Don't draw the whole clock, just draw a circle. All right, over on this side. You are going to be told to turn a certain number of degrees, and they're going to tell you either clockwise or counterclockwise. Clockwise is this direction like the clock moves. So go ahead and draw a circle and put arrows going around this way. If you are told to turn clockwise, you're kind of pulling it down and then back up. And there'll be a rule for that that'll tell you how mathematically to make something turn clockwise. Also, put a little circle down there and you're going to be turning counter. Clockwise. So I'm going to write that counter clockwise, which means in the opposite direction that the clock moves. So if you're told to turn something counterclockwise, instead of pulling it down and around, you actually go this way. All right, so we're going to be turning two ways with the clock and against the clock. All right. Uh, to do that, there's rules, and we're going to put these rules in this box, and eventually, not today, because I kind of want you to finish in class today if we can. That's I took a, some extra time to shorten things up and condense them, because uh, yesterday we couldn't finish in class. So today, you have this chart out while you're doing your homework. We are going to do three rotations, so I'm going to have you write this on here. We are going to go 90 degrees. Can I just use, uh, I'll write it out clockwise. But that's actually going to be the same as another one, so I'm going to change colors here. 90 degrees with the clock. If you go ahead and look up at the clock. If you're up at 12, right, and you go 90 degrees with the clock, you would land at 3, correct? Another way to get there is to go counterclockwise. So start at 12 and pull it all the way around back to 3, correct? The clock is the shorter way to go from 12 to 3. I would just turn 90 degrees with the clock, but I could have gone 270 degrees against the clock or counter. I'm just going to write counter CW because I don't have room to fit it. Those are going to have the exact same rule. I'll show it to you and then we'll write it down. All right. The other way we're going to turn, ah, drop my pen is we're going to go 90 degrees against the clock. So when it tells you to go 90 degrees counterclockwise, we're going to have a rule for it. But it's going to be the same as another turn. What do you think, Bjorn? What do you think the turn's going to be that's the same as going 90 against the clock? 270 30. degrees clockwise. Yeah, 270 clockwise will have the exact same rule. So there's not four rules for that. There's going to be two. The other one is 180 degrees. And I'm not going to write clockwise or counterclockwise because it doesn't matter. Do you get why? Okay. And you're nodding, right? 180 degrees, if they tell you clockwise or counterclockwise, if it starts at 12, you're going to end up at the 6 on the clock, whether you go with the clock or against the clock. So you end up at the same place. So there's one rule. Okay. All of these, we're going to write x, y. Go like this. x, 
y gets sent to, on this one, x, y gets sent to, and on our last one, x, y gets sent to. I'm going to show you up here how it works, and then we're going to put the rules down. So I'm just going to, we have shorter notes, but I'm just going to do them a little slower today. I'll let you get those copied down. So right here, I want you guys to put a dot at one to the right and three up. And let's label it A. And let's over here write A is at one comma three. So you guys go put a dot there. Mine's red. The first thing I'm going to do with that letter A is I'm going to go turn it this way. And we're going to look and see what happens to the coordinates. So when we turn it, it's kind of like it's on a little stick attached to the origin. So you got to picture it being on a stick. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees with the clock. Does that make sense, Carly? When I do that, watch where it ends up. So I'm going to take this blue dot, and I'm going to go like this into the origin. I'm going to head out at about 90 degrees with the clock. So when I connect this, and I kind of want you to do it, go dotted, just do it really lightly. Like if it was on a little string, I just turned it 90 degrees and go like this with the clock. Look at where it ended up. Okay, My new coordinates with the 90 degree with the clock rotation, it landed at 3 to the right and 1 down. All right. So now we're going to write a rule for it. What used to be y ended up in the x spot. Do you see that? Right, Adam? So we're going to write a y right here. The 3 ended up first, and it was second. I'm not going to write x here, but it's close. What do you think I'm going to write, guys? The second coordinate is almost the x. But not quite, right, Nina? What do you think I'm going to write in my second slot? Negative x. And if you know what x and y are and you know how to negate things, that's all you need to do to turn it 90 degrees with the clock. We'll go put a little sample on here. So with a 90 degree turn, negative 2 comma 5 will get sent to. I don't need to graph it now and physically turn it because I have a rule for it. You guys go fill in this. If I told you to take that point and you're going to turn it 90 degrees clockwise or 20 to 70 against the clock, you are just going to follow this rule. And it's easy to follow, right, Logan? What would my new point be if it's supposed to get sent to y opposite x? What would I put right here? Logan came. What's the y value of this point? The negative 2 or the 5? You don't know which one of these is x or y? Yeah, you do. I know you do. <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to let you not answer me. It's driving me nuts, you guys. Which one of these is the x and which one is the y? The first one is the x and the second one is the y. All right, so when I ask you which one of these is the y, what's the answer? Five, you write it first. All right? And then my second one, I'll do the opposite of the X. Alex, can you put that down? All right? Thank you. Get the phone away. Thank you. All right. Um, Gabby, so if it goes Y, the opposite of X, what's going to go right here? Done. If I plotted them, it would have turned it. All right? So for my next one, what I'm going to have you guys do, I'm going to erase this in here. You can keep it on yours. The next thing I'm going to do with this one is go 90 against the clock. So this blue dot is going to come into the center, and then it's going to head against the clock, 90 degrees. So it's going to come in, and then it's going to head, whoopsie, head out. Why isn't it taking it with me? There we go, over to here. And if you take a look, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go out, and you'll see that I rotated it 90 
against the clock. So when I go up here and I'm going to say, well, what rule will do that without me having to physically do it? We're going to hop up here and we're going to say, well, my A was still at 1, 3. Now I'm going against the clock. And if you don't want to write this top part down, that's fine. But this the, on this chart, it's super important. It looks like it went to negative 3, correct? And then it was still 1 up. So let's see how they're related. This is now over here at negative 3, 1 up. So right here, it looks like it's the y value, but it's opposite. So we're going to go opposite of y. And it looks like my new y is what was in the x slot. So we're going to go x. And I'm going to have you guys do one. Let's do negative 2, 5 again. And don't plot it. Don't turn it. Follow the rule. And I'm going to walk around and see what you guys write. If it goes well, we'll move on to the next one. So you're going to use that rule where it says to turn it 90 against the clock. You're going to put the opposite of the y number in first, followed by the x number. All you need to do is know which one's x and which one's y. If you want to label them, go do that. And then just follow the rule. Go ahead and write it down. I'll take a look. We need the opposite of y. And then the x. The opposite of the y, perfect, and then the x. The opposite of the y, perfect, and then the x. All right, this side's really good. Perfect. So everybody that looked like I'm going to go to that side because they, they all had it right over there. They wrote opposite of the y and then the x. How'd you guys do on this side? Good? Yep. Awesome. Our last one is going to be the 180. It's the easiest one to do. The 180 just sends it directly across, like a 180 degree turn. So it's basically, it just remember a line is 180 degrees? It basically just goes on a straight line this way. So watch what happened to 1, 3. It went to 1 to the left and 3 down. It's the easiest of the three rules because... It looks like all it did was do the opposite of the x and the opposite of the y. There's no switching around. So that one's really easy. So let's take negative 2, 5, and this time I'll walk down that side of the room. And we are going to rotate it without graphing it 180 degrees. We're going to do the opposite of the x and the opposite of the y. If you want to label them, they don't switch on this one. You're strictly going to take their opposites. There we got it down. Perfect, Zach. Just take their opposites and don't need, if you can, if you know what X and Y are, and you know how to do opposites, we are good. Awesome. So Mario wrote 2, negative 5. If you were to plot them, which the whole point is to maybe do this without physically having to turn, right? The rules that you're going to use are these. You're going to want to have them out. I have them on the back board, too. Um, we're going to turn the page and just see how many of these we need to do. I don't think we're going to need to do all of them, but I want to do a couple. So the first thing you need to do is go plot your points. So we're going to go put A at 2 to the right. You might want to, by the way, sometimes these don't get very dark, and you really need to have these axes. So you might want to really darken those. Just take a minute. And did yours end up very dark? Uh, it looks like it. So first thing we're going to do is go plot the original. Two to the right, one, two, four, five, six, seven up, right there. And I'm going to label it A. This is my image, and I'm going to turn it. I'm going to take B and go six to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. I'll put a little B on there. And then C, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right and 1 up. I'm going to make my triangle. And then I'm going to do some math that will turn it. Okay, so I'm not going to physically, like, grab every point and turn it. I'm going to do math for it, Adam. Are you ready? The math I'm going to do depends on what they tell me. How many degrees? So this is one of the 90 ones. And it's 90 counterclockwise. 
So I want you guys to go look at your rule at the top and it helps to write it down. All right, so the 90 counterclockwise move off of your chart says you're going to take each of those ordered pairs and what does the counterclockwise one say, Cole, on your sheet? It's going to take it to, you're going to take the negative of the Y and the positive of the X. Yep, and make sure you know 100, you might want to label these X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, and we're going to just go follow the rule. So my new A, we're looking at A, correct, is going to be the opposite of the Y, so at negative 7, comma, the X. And if I go plot that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the left, and 2 up, What's going to happen is if I connected these, I'm not going to because it's going to make a mess, but it would make a 90 degree angle in there and it will have turned it this way. It's kind of cool how it works. All right, so I want you guys to go do the other two and plot them. And I'm going to walk around and look. It looks good. We skipped some examples. If not, I just do. I have extras on here. I have five. I'm hoping maybe you could do like three of them. So for each one of those coordinates, B and C, you're going to do the opposite of the Y value, comma the X, and then you're going to plot it. When you're done, it should look like you actually had it on a stick, and you turned it 90 degrees against the clock. So go connect those. And then you should have two triangles, the original over here, and then you should have another one that looks like it got turned this way. Again, up and then just connect those, Gabby, and you're good to go. So you should have two triangles on there. Perfect. So once you connect those, it will be great. Looks good, Mario. All right, while you guys are wrapping it up, I'm going to go plot mine because the ones I saw were right. So it's the opposite of the Y and then the X. So the next one's negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a lot of plotting dots, but it's easy. It's kind of nice to have an easy chapter, but it's also kind of boring because you just do this math and plot the dot. Doing some math and plotting it up, right, Bjorn? Mm -hmm. So what is my C prime going to go to, Bjorn? Can you tell me? Because I don't want to scroll again. It's going to go to negative 1, 4. Do you guys agree with him? Yes? Mario, you do too? So negative 1, 4 is my new C. I'm going to draw it, and I'm now done with that problem. Okay? So I'm cutting the note shorter and your homework shorter, but for all of them, I need to see an original and what happens after the turn. How'd that one go? Did you guys do well? you guys over there get it? Yep. We're going to only, let's try one more, and then maybe we'll just go to the homework and see it. Maybe we don't need a whole bunch of examples. Let's go do this square. So let's plot it. Two to the right and six up. Lots of counting. You might want to put an X and a Y right there, just so you know. Let's go six to the right and five up. I'm going to put a Q on there and a P on here. Five to the right. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one up. A nice R. And a one to the right, two up. A nice S. It's going to make a nice square. We're going to turn that square. Whoopsie, I kind of missed it. Let me clean that up a little bit. We're going to turn that square 180 degrees. What's our rule, Eve? For 180 degree turn. Negative x, negative y. So you might want to write that next to it, and you're just going to do exactly what it says. Negative x, negative y, negative x, negative y. It's the easiest one. Negative x, negative y. We're not switching their locations or anything. Negative x, negative y. Once that's done, Lauren, what am I going to do? I use the rule, I'm going to plot it, and what it should do is send it 180 degrees, and it doesn't matter which direction. That's why I just said 180. So when I go do a replot, I can't see that number there, negative 2, negative 6. Here would be my new P, 
negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 5 would be my new Q, negative 5, negative 1, and then negative 1, negative 2. I will connect them, and I'll see that my square looks like it rotated 100 degrees, okay? This was R prime, and this was S prime. Done. What do you think? Do you want to go try homework for a little bit? I think what we'll do with the homework is we'll all do number one together. So I'm gonna, I think I felt like you guys were getting it right when I was walking around the room. So those of you who had me last semester know if you're paying attention and you're doing stuff right, we just can go right to the homework. All right, so let's go to number one on your homework, which I'll pass out because I condensed that as well. Thanks, Miss Lou. The notes were like seven pages. I cut them down to two. And this homework was three pages. Wow. I thought I could make it easier than what it was for her. So we'll do number one together, and then we'll go. What time is it? What time is it? Is it? Uh, we are done at 8.56. All right, so we'll work for maybe 10 minutes on one through five, and then we have to go take a few more notes. We'll do number one together real fast. We'll do it just like we're doing the homework. So we are going to go take a look at where these are. I would suggest you write their coordinates on the side or right next to them. But somewhere you should pluck off these coordinates. So for number one, the first thing we're going to do is go get the coordinates of this one before we turn it written down. So it looks like A is at 1, 2, 3 to the right, 4 up. So A is at 3, 4. So go figure out where they are and then use the rule to turn it. All right, B is at 4, 5, 1. And C is at 3 to the right, 1 up. I would write those down. Some of you are writing them next to the letters. That's fine, too. I like to write them in the space off to the side. Now, are you ready? We are going to do the 90-degree rule, and we are going to do the clockwise one. So you should look at your notes. You don't need to have them memorized. You just need to know how to use them. So, Zach, what does it say for the 90 degrees counterclockwise? Minus y. And then the x. So for all of these, and again, you might want to go put a little x and a y up here. You are going to go with the opposite of the y followed by the x. So let's go fill those in. I'll just have three of you tell me what they'd be because I just scrolled and I can't see it. So go ahead, Carly. If I did for A, the opposite of the y and then the x, what would I get? Negative 4. Negative 4 what? 3. 3. Do you guys agree with her? Because I'm not looking at it. Brandon, you said yeah. So Brandon, give me where B would go if you did the opposite of the y and then the x. Do you guys agree with him? Awesome, Zach. Thank you for nodding. Otherwise, I don't know. Cause... And then let's pick on this side. Alex, where would this C go? Negative 1. Do you guys agree with him, too? All right. Once that's done, you're going to plot. So let's go do that. Negative 4, 3 is up here. That's my new A. And then negative 1, 5. If you can plot dots, this chapter is really easy. Here's my new B. And then my new C is negative 1, 3, you guys said. Boom, 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 done, off to number 2. So you should be, there's five of them on here. I should see the originals, the rule being used for the new, and then you should have two figures on your graph. I cut the assignment way down, but I'm having you do all that on the other top. All right, I'm going to work for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to stop you and I have to get a few more notes. Or actually, let's go 10 minutes or until the first person finishes number six. Whichever comes first, so that I don't have anybody with wait time. That's fair, right? So when you finish, let me know. Should all be on number two? How are we doing? Good? Make sense? How are you doing? Good? It's the same as yesterday, but now you get how the rules work. Right? How are we doing, kiddos? Good? Tom? Is he stuck? You know what? 
I should pause my recording. There's going to be a lot of dead time. The back side, we only did two examples because it was going so well. So I'm going to head back here to the new stuff. There should be three samples on the bottom. We'll see how many we need. One of the pictures, by the way, that I put on your new notes is exactly the one that's on your test. It's not the same questions, though, but I was like, well, I'm going to grab a different one. And I grabbed the one that's on your test, so i got to go find it. Where are we here? Okay, so right here on this page, you're going to be given a regular polygon. Remember, regular means that all the sides and the angles are the same. Mine got stretched out, but technically, does yours look more like a square? Because I'm gonna, Yeah, it should. So it's going to tell you that you have a center. And it's kind of like you're going to be spinning the figure. They're going to tell you um, how many degrees. So I want you to go in at the center right here. In here in the middle, draw a circle. How many degrees are in a circle? From first semester. 360. And then you have four angles in here, but they're all the same. I know mine don't look the same, but it got stretched out. So what you're going to do on the side here is you're going to go 360 divided by number of angles. You always will. If it was a pentagon, you do 360 divided by 5. If it was an octagon, you do 360 divided by 8. Right? This is a square. So for ours, we're going to do 360 divided by 4. It will give you the degrees of one turn. So what that means is this is 90 this is 90, this is 90, and you should put it on here just so you can see it, and this is 90. So one click is going to be 90 degrees for this one. So here's what it says you're supposed to do. It says, find the image when you do a 90 degree counterclockwise, so go like that, you're going against the clock, the clock turns this way, so I'm going to be turning 90 degrees, I'm going to be taking H, so go put a dot on H, and I'm going to go 90 degrees against the clock. So I'm going to be going, and that's just one click. It would land on T. If it said with the clock, what would it land on? One click. M. Exactly. So you'll be told how many degrees. This says 180. It says counterclockwise, but it doesn't matter. Right? But 180 would be two clicks, or 290. So you're going to go click, click. And H, no matter which way you went, would land on A. So the first thing you need to do is get the degrees of what I call one click, or one turn, and then you're going to do that. How many clicks would 270 degrees be? How many clicks am I going to turn it? Three. Asante, yeah, exactly. They'll tell you which way. This also says against the clock. So I'm going to kind of pretend this is on a stick, and I'm going to go one, two, three clicks. It would land on M. Done. Kind of easy, right? The last one says a 360. What does a 360 do? A full turn, correct? So everything would, so HM is this line segment, but if I'm doing a 360, it's going to land on itself, all right? So for these ones on this page here, all you need to do, like now we've got a different figure, so the first thing you're going to do is figure out what one click is, all right? So we're going to do 360, because that's a full turn, and sometimes it's nice to put this in it, like these pie wedges in here so you can actually see the, the turns. What am I going to divide the 360 by, Adam, do you think? Uh, six. six, for sure, because I want to figure out how many degrees are in one click. So I have 60 degrees for one piece of pie or one click. You might want to go in here, put the circle, and maybe point or write 60 in there, but one click is going to be 60 degrees. So this one wants to know, what is the angle that would take at H to X? Okay? It doesn't say clockwise or counterclockwise, so I don't care. I would go the shorter. So to go from H to X, would it be easier to go with the clock or against the clock? What do you think? With, with the 
clock, Carly. And you're just going to count the clicks. So if I go from H to X, I'm going to go one click, two clicks. So it would be two clicks or 120 degrees. What do you think? Do I need to do much more with that? No? Let's try one more. Let's do like with a segment. So it says, what is the angle that will take HE? So this one, go ahead and mark it maybe darker, to AG. So basically, oh yeah, I'm on this one. H has to go to A. So start with H and start clicking. One, two, three clicks. Correct? So three times 60 is 108. And you're done. So last one. This is the one I took off the test, but I just changed. You can see I kind of have a different font now. I don't want the same questions as the same picture. So go ahead and tell me what's the first thing you would do on this one, Eve, before I even read the questions. But yeah, so let's count. One, actually, even if you want to head up and draw them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, ten of them, right? So, Eve, what am I going to do with that ten? 360 divided by 10, 36 degrees in one turn. You might want to put that on there, just add one of them. I would put it on all 10 of them. So it means all of these numbers are actually multiples of 36. All right, let's go to the uh, first one. It says, what angle will take E to A? There's two options. I can go with the clock or against the clock, and both answers are correct. But I'm going to go with the clock because it's fewer clicks. So one, two, three clicks. So I will do three times 36 degrees. And I went clockwise, so I guess I should write 180 and maybe put a clockwise on there. Right? There's another correct answer, though, correct? And that would have been to go seven clicks counterclockwise. You guys go do the next one, J to C. So put your pen on J, travel to C, either with the clock or against the clock, but I take the shorter of the two. How many clicks is it, Kylie? Three clicks. You guys agree? I wasn't looking at it. She said three clicks, so we have the exact same answer. Did you go with or against the clock, Kylie? With it? All right. Last one up. It says, what is the image of D? Well, let's go put our pen or our eyeballs at D after 180 degrees against the clock. 108 degrees. How many clicks is 108 degrees? Yeah, you just go 360 divided by, yeah, it's 36, sorry. And you would say, well, that's three clicks. So I'm at D. I need to take it three clicks against the clock because three times 36 is 108. So one, two, three clicks. We'll put it at A. I think we get that, right? It's just all about the degrees in one turn, and then you deal with that. So I think regardless of where you are on the yellow, I want you to go to the back. See if you can finish that whole block back. You have 10 minutes, and this side goes way faster because you're not plotting all kinds of stuff. So go ahead and go to the back.